Hello. Let us take a look at the poisonous Forbidden Rite on a Pathfinder. Forbidden Rite is a spell characterized by its self-damaging property. You shoot chaos projectiles but with each cast, you're also dealing chaos damage to your character that is equal to 40% of maximum life and 25% of maximum energy shield. To mitigate it, you're forced to invest in survivability. Chaos Resistance, redirecting physical damage to be taken as DOT, Fire, Cold, and Damage Recoup are your primary defensive layers. The best way to recoup life is to equip Stasis Prison. To make a hit damage you in a more gradual manner, use Progenesis Flask so that a quarter of it will be taken as DOT. The type of damage you will specialize in is Poison, it's easy to scale it up while being tanky as it takes some time to ramp up. Chaos damage dealt by Forbidden Rite is a convenient feature, but it still requires a 100% chance to poison, mostly gathered from the skill tree and divergent Herald of Agony. As you're reliant on flasks like Progenesis, and you're also dealing poison damage, choosing Pathfinder is an obvious decision. Master Toxicist's Keystone increases poison damage and improves clear speed. Nature's Boon helps keep flask charges active constantly, it will be very important. As Forbidden Right deals damage to your character it's worth implementing cast when damage taken setups. It's a fairly simple poison spell build that deals millions of DPS. The more pronounced quality of this build is its durability, that's why dealing damage with poison is the best solution. To prevent getting one-shotted you'll need a big life pool. You should also get some block chance, spell suppression chance, and evasion. It's overall one of the tankiest builds in the game due to the recoup, high damage mitigation, and redirecting damage to be taken as damage over time. Clear speed is good, due to the master toxicist and semi-auto aiming at enemies at close range. Single target damage is also great for a build this tanky, but it takes some time for the poison to start dealing serious damage. It's extremely expensive, hundreds of divines. Stasis Prison alone is out of reach for most players. The build has some boxes to check before being playable. First, be sure that Forbidden Rite doesn't kill you, it will require you to have Stasis Prison with rings for life recoup. You could also use Doppelganger guys. You will need three unique flasks, one of which is very pricey. Other than that, the build can run on rare items only. Stasis Prison is a very important element of the build, as the more life recoup you have, the higher your life restoration capabilities are. This one is by far the best option. Doppelganger Guise prevents a lot of physical and chaos damage taken while sane. As you have almost no armor, and Forbidden Rite deals chaos damage, it can keep you alive. The Eternal Struggle has a lot of attributes, global defenses, and it kills enemies even earlier than culling strike support with the right implicit. Try to get ones for increased duration of ailments, increased chaos damage, chaos dot multiplier, and increased effect of auras. If you have Ashes of the Stars you can definitely use it in this build for more damage, some attributes, and mana reservation efficiency. Transform one of your keystones, preferably Supreme Ego, into the Traitor with a Balbala variant of Brutal Restraint. It requires you to have at least one of your flask slots empty, but if you're using a micro distillery belt, it's already a requirement. It's not necessarily needed, but extremely useful in most cases. On the balance of Terror Jewel, you want only one despair related modifier that will make it possible to inflict wither on hit after casting despair manually. It's very convenient. Forbidden Flesh and Flame. Some of the keystones you can borrow from a raider are Way of the Poacher for Frenzy Charges, Avatar of the Chase for a better onslaught, or Deadeye's Gathering Winds for Tailwind. The best modifier on a Watcher's Eye is Vitality's Life on Hit, but Purity of Elements has some of the best ones too. Chaos Resistance or Redirecting Physical Damage to be taken as Elemental Damage are great. Be sure that your flasks are up at all times. These will lower the mana cost of skills to make the build playable, grant resistances, and mitigate tons of incoming damage. You can then focus on damage. The skill tree and skill gems cover up to 90% of chance to poison on hit, the remaining 10% can be gathered. You can scale up this poison damage by increasing the gem level of Forbidden Rite, 
or modifiers like chaos.multiplier, poison duration, and poison deals damage faster. For defenses, seek maximum life, spell suppression, and evasion or block chance. To reduce the mana cost of skills invest in prefixes on your jewelry and get some mana recouped on jewels. Don't forget about attributes like intelligence and strength. The helmet is a gear piece where you should get life, resistances, and spell suppression. You can also get the eldritch implicit or regular affixes to redirect physical damage to be taken as elemental, as you have little to no armor, but specific flasks instead. The best weapon would have two mods to increase your forbidden right skill gem by two, even when socketed in body armor. You can also seek poison damage, chaos damage over time, cast speed, or poison chance. Intelligence-based shield can also increase the gem level of Forbidden Right by 1, increase your maximum elemental resistances, and get you more life, resistances, block chance, and suppression. Boots should get you life, resistances, attributes, and spell suppression. You're already quite fast, but increased movement speed is always good to have. For Eldritch Implicits, get ones for an increased action speed and to make your poisons deal damage faster. Use gloves for, again, life, suppression, resistances. You can also stumble upon cast speed, dot modifiers, and attributes. Chance to poison on hit can be added with eldritch orbs. A belt is extremely important. You have to have your flasks up at all times, and as mageblood would solve this issue, it's often too expensive and cannot use unique flasks. There are three suffixes and one prefix to help you with flask sustain, increased effect, you probably won't need all of them, but be sure that your flasks will last long enough to defeat bosses. Micro Distillery Belt can be useful, but it's not mandatory. If you've decided to use a rare amulet, be sure it's a good one. Try to get two modifiers that would increase the gem level of Forbidden Right by two in total. That's, of all, and, intelligence, skill gems. Other great modifiers are increased chaos damage over time multiplier, and some basic ones for defenses. Use two rare rings with a prefix for reduced mana cost of skill on both of them, you can craft this one after unlocking it first. More maximum life, resistances, and attributes will be great, but another very important mod is a suffix for life recoup, up to 18% each with the right catalysts. There are plenty of suitable affixes on jewels. You will probably use two or maybe up to five of them. Look for chance to poison if you don't have it, attributes, life, resistances, cast speed, and dot mods for poison. Use two large chaos cluster jewels for more chaos damage. We recommend only one unwaveringly evil and touch of cruelty notables. Medium cluster jewels can once again increase your chaos damage over time, but getting the flask related ones may be more useful. Spiked concoction is pretty much a must have. It basically increases flask charges gained by 20% and the effect of flasks by 10%. Progenesis is used to take 25% less damage from hits, that's on top of all of your other defenses. You will postpone this unavoidable damage, but due to life recoup, you will regenerate it faster than it deals damage to you. Use Dying Sun to take less fire damage and to fire more projectiles. Keep in mind that the increased flask effect can nearly double the effects here, that's why redirecting damage to fire or cold, with Taste of Hate, is so great. Taste of Hate grants tons of cold resistance, less cold damage taken, and redirects physical damage to be taken as cold. If you have space for only one flask, use a Quicksilver flask with increased effect, reduced duration and reduced mana cost of skills. If you can accommodate 5 flasks, pick Topaz flask with increased cast speed. Forbidden Right is the primary source of damage, it deals some chaos damage on impact and tons of poison damage subsequently. Link it with Void Manipulation, Deadly Ailments, Unbound Ailments, Spell Echo, and Greater Multiple Projectiles. Another Forbidden Rite is used mostly to speed up the CWDT setups and other minor improvements. It hits enemies dealing low damage. Keep it at level 7. Link it with level 1 cast when damage taken, onslaught support, and level 1 divergent purifying flame so that enemies will receive increased damage. 
Use purity of elements to get elemental resistances, elemental ailment immunity, and some optional watcher's eye modifiers. The Divergent Herald of Agony will provide you with the necessary 20% chance to poison on hit, even more with Ashes of the Stars. Malevolence is an aura for more damage over time and increased skill effect duration. Link these three with Enlightened Support for increased mana reservation efficiency. Poison will last longer on enemies affected by temporal chains. It lowers action speed too. Enemies cursed with despair have less chaos resistance. Link these two with level 20 cast when damage taken. Haste is used for increased movement and cast speed. Use Vol Haste, and link it with Divine Blessing to make a temporary aura out of regular haste. Use the Divergent version of Divine Blessing if you struggle with mana, and Divergent Inspiration for the same purpose. With proper gear, it should cost little to no mana at all. Link it with increased duration support too. Flame Dash is a mobility skill used to move faster and dodge attacks. Use level 1 Vitality if you have a particular mod on a Watcher's Eye for instant life on hit. If not, use a guard spell such as Steel Skin. You can also pick the Withering Step. The other despair is being cast manually to reap the benefits of doing so granted by the Balance of Terror, it will get you Wither stacks on hit. You should kill all three bandits for two additional skill points. For a major god, pick the soul of Arakali. It reduces damage taken from damage over time, which the build is likely to suffer from. For the same reason, we'd recommend soul of Ralakesh if you suffer from bleeding, but it shouldn't be a big issue with Master Surgeon Keystone. Another option is soul of Tukahama for physical damage mitigation when standing still. The passive skill tree is centered around gathering poison and chaos damage over time nodes for damage, and maximum life with spell suppression for survivability. Flask-related nodes are extremely important too. Don't forget to pick Charisma, Whispers of Doom, and Supreme Ego to be transformed into the traitor. For masteries, pick both maximum life ones for more maximum life, poison masteries for an increased poison duration and faster damage infliction, Flask Masteries for increased flask effect and utility flask charges every 3 seconds. Chaos Mastery for chaos damage over time per chaos resistance. Suppression Mastery for extra 12% suppression chance if you meet the conditions. Curse Mastery for reduced critical damage taken. And Reservation Mastery for increased damage per aura or herald. In case of mana issues, just allocate Eldritch Battery and a small energy shield leech in this section. That is all for this guide. We hope it was edifying and enlightening. To stay informed about new meta or interesting builds subscribe to the channel. Stay safe.